it's all things arachnus today guys um this is cool um you guys uh, i think it sounded to me like our first session um nima and matthias you guys have been you guys have been working this up you guys, you're really well versed on what what the new features are obviously i mean come on i i give you credit for designing them i give you credit for putting all this together and then presenting it to our our various partners but it definitely sounds like <laughs> you know how this stuff works you know what you went after with the new you know was rolling this stuff out the way you were fielding questions on stuff that you're continuing to work on all that so i i just love the fact that you guys are sitting in the wheelhouse sitting in the center of all this which is important for our audience to be able to first of all ask questions i want our audience as we had in the last session um diving deep and telling us uh you know what you were expecting and, and in a lot of ways they've already solved that problem because this new stuff is going to kind of check some boxes. So uh, without further ado, um, Nima, thank you. Matthias, thank you. Um, we're going to record this. I am recording this. So everybody, audience members, anybody who registered today is going to get um, the slide deck and a recording. So even if um, you know one of your uh, teammates had to bail off or um, is not on this, we'll make sure that they get this, want them to review this. Um, the last session took us about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Let's see where the questions take us. But we we have uh, cut, a, a, a cut away for an hour. So whatever, however we want to get into it. Um, but both of you guys, I cannot thank you enough for uh, being on our weekly webinar series. This is uh, partner facing for all the partner store. That's how we market this. So um, a lot of good questions, a lot of good talent out there. And um, I'll hand it out over to you, Matthias. Thank you so much. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm Matthias Bulmer. I'm the product manager for uh, networking wired products here at SnapOne. Um, sitting directly next to me, I've got uh, Nima with me as well. He's a product manager for uh, our networking wireless category as well as cloud products for uh, for SnapOne. And, and so today we're kind of going to talk about our new Arachnus multi-gig offering as well as how that combines with uh, our access points that we've had out for a little while here now and, and really truly have a, a curb to client solution all the way from uh, where your ISP drops off multi-gig into the router, through the switches, into now the, the access points. So um, kind of that full solution and, and, and kind of tell you a little, about, a little bit about what we have. So um, first thing, you know, why upgrade to the new multi-gig routers, right? So um, currently 88% of the U.S. has access to at least one gig ISP service. So that, that's a pretty substantial number, right, and, and growing quick. Um, out of those businesses and residential areas, a quarter of them already have one gig or greater fiber coverage, right? And, and so that fiber coverage is usually what, you know, is going to be needed to, to kind of go to multi-gig. So a lot of ISPs have already invested in that. Um, there's at least eight ISPs that already offer greater than two gigs um, of, of internet service with a huge investment. Um, I mean, we're talking about multi-dozen billion dollar investments in infrastructure and networks over the next few years to kind of take us into that next world, right? That next realm of, uh, of internet speeds um, into that multi-gig world. So. With that, we have launched our new 220 and 520 router series. So first up, our AN 520. Um, this is our absolute flagship. This is our workhorse. Um, two and a half gig WAN and LAN ports um, with up to 4.4 gigs of throughput. What that means is you have almost full duplex throughput, both directions, um, with a firewall, uh, a minimal firewall, but a firewall enabled. Um, so unbelievable, unbelievable processing power to, to, to get this throughput. Um, open VPN and PPTP for remote management. Again, VPN um, remote management with up to 650 megs throughput using open VPN. I just want to really emphasize that. Uh, again, if you're used to... Um, some of our competitors, as well as, you know, potentially our old router series, we're talking five to 10 times as fast connection speeds via remote open VPN connections. That is fast. Um, stateful firewall for secure connections, oversee pro hub and configuration. Again, if you're new to our router series and, and you haven't used any of these, oversee pro hub is built directly into the routers. You do not need a separate pro hub and I'll explain in a little bit about what that gets you, um, but it's it's really, really, really crucial um, for your operations um, and, and should really help you out in, in the long run. 
Um, the 520 also has dual WAN. It has a one gig RJ45 SFP combo port um, for dual WAN connectivity to give you both um, load balancing as well as failover, but also MDU applications if that is uh, a need for you, um, which you can configure right through the local UI. You can pick one of those three options of, of how you want to utilize that dual WAN port. Um, but it can also be converted to a second LAN port. So if, if you're looking for a second LAN port, that port will be able to, to provide that for you uh, in a single gig. Um, and then it has IPsec VPN. Um, that can be used for site-to-site -site remote connections. And again, the throughput on that site-to-site -site connection is 2.55 gigs. For reference, our um, 310 series had a, a couple dozen, uh, roughly around 35 megs or so, I believe, um of site to site connection speeds this has 2.55 gig of site to site remote connection speeds so um again it, it it's pretty unbelievable in terms of processing power speed that, that this thing um can handle next up and and this is uh, i unbelievably unique to us um a problem solver for, for many of our partners, um, a very compact form factor, and all the installation accessories are included in the box for rack mounting, for wall mounting, um, obviously desktop. But then this is, uh, is new with this router of, um, you can mount this in a Versa box or a uh, wiring can directly. So again, very, very compact form factor, LEDs on the top so that you can see the status if you open up the, the VersaBox uh, door um, or your wiring can door. Um, and, and this, again, if you have this on uh, in your van and, and somebody, it doesn't matter what installation it is, you'll be able to find a spot for this guy um, to install it and um, and provide multi-gig um, speeds to your, to your client. <clears throat> again, two and a half gig WAN and LAN ports, um, up to 4.3 gigs um, throughput, open VPN, PPTP for remote management. Again, that up to 650 megs throughput um, through open VPN. I can't emphasize enough how, how fast this is. And if you compare it to some of our competitors, um, we'll blow them out of the water in terms of remote connection speeds. Um, stateful firewall, oversee pro hub and, and configuration. Um, and then uh, again, like I said, that compact design, um, it does not matter. We'll be able to find a, a mounting solution for you. Um, most likely, <laughs> um, I'm sure there are some corner cases you can think of. Um, but if this doesn't fit, I don't know what will. So, um, as mentioned, Oversee Pro Hub included in all of our routers. If you're not familiar with the Pro Hub and what the, the Oversee Pro version gets you, uh, it really expands the oversee capability to your whole network. You have full network um, visibility. You get a location dashboard. Uh, you can run ISP speed tests through the oversee pro hub. So you always know kind of what the site um, is running at from a speed uh, standpoint. Device monitoring for non-SNAP1 products. Um, notifications, advanced remote access through a secure um, connection. Uh, control system monitoring and, and enhanced product integrations. So again, if you don't utilize Pro today, um, try it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised uh, and, and probably won't go back to not using Oversee Pro um, in the future. So now that you have this over the, this multi gig router, why upgrade to the multi gig switch? Right. Well, if you want to really utilize the multi gig router. Um, speed throughout your network, you're going to need the switch to connect to that router to make sure you don't have a bottleneck in your network. Um, AV over IP solutions are moving into 10 gig applications. Um, SDVOE, uh, the SDVOE platform has zero latency AK for Pro AV as well as true 4K60. Those take a ton of bandwidth. And so with that, you're going to need a 10 gig switch um, to, to fully utilize that as well as higher POE requirements um, are included in these multi-gig switches. Um, there's existing substantial POE applications as well as in the future, there will be more and more coming. Uh, for example, Lutron has a 90 watt motorized shade um, that can be powered through POE. 
we have a switch that will be able to power that motorized shade for you um, if you desire, uh, desire so. Um, so with that, we have the new AN620 and, and the new AN920 uh, families. Uh, first up, the AN620 switches, uh, two and a half gig ports uh, on every single port. So every single port is full two and a half gigs, full backplane. Um, you can handle every single port, full duplex switching both ways. Um, there's We have a full switching capacity on, on, on the back end. It is available in an eight and a 24 port configuration rear ports. Layer three light, static and VLAN based routing if you have complex um, layer three network uh, configurations. PoE++ type three, so up to 60 watts per port um on every single port from a poe budget you're looking at 240 watt for the eight port or 720 watt um, for the 24 port if you want to throw a wi-fi 6 access point an a and not a 20 access point on all 24 ports you can do that the 24 port switch has the poe capacity to power that um every single wi-fi 6 access point without um losing power to any of them uh, SFP plus uplinks, there's two 10 gig SFP plus uh, fiber uplinks um, on, on both of these switches. Um, and then we've optimized our fans. Um, so we've really optimized the, the, the speed table, the fan speed table um, to keep the temperature um, at a safe operating temperature, but really running the, uh, the fans as quiet as possible, as low speed as possible to really um, make these switches uh, as quiet as they can be. And then lastly, um, there's this overseas in integration that that this new hardware allows us to do. So uh, the hardware is now capable to provide um, full functionality into Oversee so that as we go through, we'll be able to innovate through Oversee to bring you new functionality to these switches as time progresses. So there might be a feature that might not be available today, the hardware, though, will allow us to, to bring you that feature um, within the next couple of months, within the next couple of years, uh, and, and continue to innovate um, on, on existing hardware um, without having to upgrade the, the switch. So, again, that's huge, um, and, and we're really excited about what we're going to be able to do with these today as well as in the future. You have a question around the 620. Will there be more port, port counts, 16 or 48 ports? Uh, we are evaluating um, more options for both the AN620 and the 920 um, products. Yes. I don't have a timing on that, but um, we are evaluating. Yes. Um, AN920 switches. Again, 10 gig ports on every single RJ45 port. So uh, again, if you want to talk about workhorse, our flagship this thing is the most powerful switch we have ever created. Um, it, it can handle anything really that you throw at it. Uh, 12 available in 12 and 24 port front port configurations. Um, again, 10 gig RJ45, every single port, no backplane issues, no switching capacity um, problems from a, a, a total non blocking throughput. Um, layer three. Static VLAN and multicast routing, uh, PoE plus plus type four up to ninety watts on every single port. And again, I can't stress that enough. Every single port can handle ten gig ninety watts. Um, modular power supplies. So there's two uh, two power supplies in the back or slots for power supplies. It will ship with one power supply. There's an option to buy an additional power supply to either add power redundancy. Um, or expand your POE budget. So you can go from the 700s into the 1600s for a POE budget. What that means is on a 12 port switch, if you really wanted to, you can make sure that every single port can power 90 watts simultaneously without running into any POE budget issues. Um, again, it is unbelievable. You're going to need a, a separate breaker just for the switch if, if you're fully uh, running this to its full capacity. Um, uplink modules, again, these are sold separate, um, but the 12 port has one slot. The 24 port has two slots um, for 100 gig QSFP 28 uplinks. So um, again, 
if you need to link together a couple of these, you have that capability um, through 100 gig uplinks. Uh, and then those optimized fans as well as the uh, overseas integration um, is included in these switches as well. Um, so again, we're really, really thrilled. We're unbelievably excited about what we can do with these switches today, but we're also really, really excited about what we can do in the future um, through Oversee. Um, and that might include um, MOIP configuration through Oversee, um, which if you've been at Infocom, you've seen that. If you're coming to CDI, you will see that. Um, we are working on a very simple, easy setup button through Oversee uh, where you will just select your transceivers and it will configure IGMP, access control lists, fast leaf per port, um, and anything else you might need to, to run our, um, our MOIP system. So with that, I will hand it on over to Nima. One more question we have on the 920. Will there yes. be an all SFE plus version of the 920? We are also evaluating a uh, aggregation switch to add to the 920 family. Um, again, don't have any timing on it, uh, but that is something we are evaluating. Yes. Do you have the SFP plus modules? Uh, yes. The trans if the transceivers are the question, then yes, we do have SFP plus transceivers um, that should be available. Can you stack two additional PSUs in the 24 port and have both power supplies redundancy and increase POE budget? So if the question is, uh, if POE budget will, if you can expand the POE budget and have power redundancy, uh, you cannot have power redundancy with an expanded POE budget. So if you install one power supply and then you go above the POE budget on the, a, of a single power supply, if one power supply fails, it will go back down to the single power supply POE budget, but you can set priorities for your um, for your ports from a POE standpoint to make sure that if there is a reduction in your POE budget because one um, power supply fails, that your critical um, devices will continue to, to receive POE. Good question. That's all the question. Whoop. Hi everyone, Nemo here. Uh, I manage the wireless category. Thank you, Matthias. Um, so to talk about the Wi-Fi 6 Arachnus portfolio, the first thing I want to say is when we started developing the X20 series, in this case, Wi-Fi 6, we actually reimagined and redesigned everything from ground up compared to the X10 or, or the older generation. So uh, right now, today, we have three access points in this portfolio, all of them obviously capable of multi-gig uh, applications. And we've fixed so many issues. We've uh, improved so many things compared to the old ones that uh, I'm going to talk about some of those in the next upcoming slide. But just to double click on every single access point that we have, um, the AN820, it's, it is a 4x4 antenna design which is suitable for high density environment. You have a lot of devices, a lot. those devices are simultaneously streaming. So that's a great solution for that. Just think of it as a conference room, for example, or where you have you throw parties at home and you have a ton of guests streaming at the same time. It also, because of the four by four antenna gives you extensive coverage uh, compared to the two by four version. So it does deliver an enhanced throughput over longer distance. Uh, it's also good for future proofing. If you know uh, a job requires uh, few, a few client devices, but you know it's going to be growing significantly, or they have, again, like parties and, you know, people are coming in and out, it's good for future proofing. Uh, the LAN port supports 2.5 gig. We are here today to, to talk about multi-gig and this access point absolutely delivers more than a gig. 
Um, even if you have one device only that supports uh, four by four design antenna, all you need to power this access point is 30 watt or PoE plus. So you don't need to go above like uh, 30 watt to fully power this access point. When you, when you look at the 520, it is a two by two antenna design. It is suitable for limited number of devices compared to the 820, especially think of, think about it as if you have a, a, a lot of devices, but only some of them are streaming, the rest of them are just maybe IoT devices. It's a good solution for, for that type of application. It does give you moderate coverage again, because you're, you only have two antennas per radio compared to the four antennas of the 820. So you get more range out of 820 compared to the 520. It's also more cost efficient. So if you're going to a job or you're putting together a proposal for a job where the cost is an issue, the 520 is a better solution for you. It does support 2.5 gig. Time to time I get this question around, is it really gonna support multi gig because it's a two by two antenna? Yes, don't think about just one radio. When you think about aggregate 5 gigahertz and 2.4 and all of the devices, all of the client devices streaming at the same time, you do get above the gig, uh, and which is why we have a 2.5 gigabit per second LAN port on this device. So we don't uh, bottleneck your uh, network. Many of our competitors don't have this. They think one gig is enough, which could or could not be true. We don't. We didn't want to sacrifice the performance. For the 520, same thing. You only have, need 30 watts uh, to fully power this access point. So within the same kind of uh, 520 series, we also have the outdoor version, which is a two by two omnidirectional antenna design. It's outdoor, it does support the 2.5. Uh, it's IP55 outdoor rated. It does come also with multiple mounting options for more installation flexibility. In general, if you're familiar with the uh, previous generation of Arachnus access point, 510, 810, and the 700 outdoor, the same exact form factors are used for the 520, 820, and the 520 outdoor. This gives you the opportunity to upgrade easier. We also know that you're familiar with the installation and we got really good positive feedback around the installation. So we didn't want to change that. So if you have um, a customer that has Wi-Fi 5 and they're willing to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6, all you need to do is go on site, slide the old one out, slide the new one in, and you're done with that job. You can use Oversee, which we will talk about to configure the access points. Uh, with the 520 outdoor, you again, you only need 30 watt for full functionality. Something different that we did this time around, and this was per your feedback. You asked us to have a PoE out port out of the outdoor access point, because sometimes you have an IP camera or something that you want to power up right next to the access point and running a wire is uh, not as efficient. So we did build that into this new outdoor access point, you, you gotta be careful around the power in that's needed uh, to fully fun to have a fully functional access point, you need 30 watt. But if you wanna get a PoE out of the access point, then you need to go to a 60 watt PoE in. Uh, when you use a 60 watt PoE in, you can use that PoE out port to get about 15 watt out. So again, it's great for some applications, but you have to make sure you consider that in your designs. Um, I wanted to show you some range versus rate comparison. Uh, this is 820 versus 810. We have an amazing, amazing, really great test equipment in-house uh, called Octobox. And we use that for benchmarking and testing our access points. Uh, just make sure, uh, for, to make sure you understand this is a lab environment. It helps us do an apple to apple comparison, but obviously it may be different in real life. Uh, so with this device, when we test 820 versus 810, you can see that, and the 
attenuation, you can consider that as a uh, kind of range. As we increase the attenuation, uh, that means mimicking the device uh, walking away from the access point. Uh, the 820 obviously has multi-gig capability and this, that's because of Wi-Fi 6 and all the new antenna designs that we have uh, versus the 810 that gives you about a gig. But as you see, when you move away from the access point, you still get a lot better performance out of the 820 compared to the 810. And at the end, you actually get even a little bit more range out of the 820. It's not significant, but still it counts. Now, comparing A20 to 520 within the same Wi-Fi 6 portfolio, you see why and when you need the A20 versus the 520. Remember, this is five gigahertz only, which is why you see the one gig for the 520 versus the two gig for A20. We talked about multi-gig meaning, for 520 multi-gig means aggregate both radios, 520 and 2.4. Uh, you do get, less range out of the 520 because of the number of antennas. So, um, and most of the time it's gonna be enough by the way. But this graph shows you visually what you need to consider when you design your next wireless project. <clears throat> Aside from all of that, I wanted to talk about some of the changes we've made in the software for the X20 or Wi-Fi 6 series that, uh, Every single one of them is actually based on your feedback, to be honest. The first one and the most important one is more control per SSID. Uh, in the past, and with many of our competitors actually, when you have an old device, a legacy device, such as HP printer, it's always uh, on a, every site for some reason, they don't like fast roaming. When you have fast roaming enabled, those devices don't connect to the access point. So you need to, disable fast roaming. When you do that, in the past, it used to be per AP, and that would actually impact your overall experience for the entire house or the site. With the new design, we have the fast roaming band steering and client isolation per SSID, meaning you can have one SSID specifically for those devices, call it IoT, call it printer SSID, whatever you want to call it, Create that SSID, disable fast roaming, have those devices connect to that SSID, create a separate SSID as your main network, make sure fast roaming is enabled, which will give your end user the best experience as they move around uh, that site. We also, per your request, added DFS channels, which means it gives you more options for the five gigahertz channel to pick from. You have to be careful around the DFS if your site is close to an airport or a weather uh, radar uh, and it detects that radar, it automatically falls back to the non-DFS channel. But in many cases where the environment is noisy and you're not close to an airport, having the DFS channels fixes a ton of issues and it actually gives you a better performance. The other thing that we noticed in the past is <clears throat> many of our partners don't like to update to the latest firmware because they're afraid of what's gonna happen to the access point or to the network in general, which is fair. With the new X20, we introduced something called dual image firmware, which technically we have two versions of the firmware on the same access point now. When you upgrade, and for some reason, if for any reason, if it fails, you may pull the plug, you may, it may fail just for any reason, right? It will fall back to the previous firmware <clears throat> or image and it will just boot up again and make sure that your network doesn't go down. We also added the power detection to detect if any issue, again, going back, we're looking at the current access points, we know some locations don't power the access point with 30 watts, they, they're actually using 15 watt. And that causes the access point to function, but not be fully functional. With the new X20 design <clears throat> from overseas, we raise a flag and we show you whether you have a cable problem or switch or PO injector problem and the access point is not fully powered. We raise that issue and let you know 
So you can go back and fix it and make sure your end customer enjoys the best performance. Some of the things that we've changed, again, per your feedback. <clears throat> On top of that, oversee Wi-Fi management makes it so much easier to configure your network, your wireless network in general. Um, many of you remember in the past, you used to open a browser with 30 different tabs, one for each AP and a switch and router to configure them one by one. Those days <clears throat> where it took two hours, three hours of configuration are gone. Now you can go to this magical place on OVC called Wi-Fi management, create your networks, set up your networks and apply them all at the same time to all of your, your access points. You can have a network and apply it to some of those access points, one for all of them, one guest Wi-Fi for, again, some of them, all of that you can do and manage in one place and apply it all to the access points. And then <clears throat> when you want to optimize your network, same concept, you go to this magical place, wireless radio settings, you edit each access point, you can run site surveys, you can pick the right channel, you can do all of those changes, lower the power, check if the access points are close or far away from each other. <clears throat> Look at those changes. If you're happy with them, press apply, it pushes down from the cloud to every single access point and you're done. So what used to take hours of configuration now can take only a few minutes. Uh, and you're done with the access point setup. With that, any questions? We got one. Uh, will the APs ever be offered with a black exterior? We don't have that plan right now, to be honest. But um, I mean, technically, our access points, the plastic is built in a way that you can paint them i wouldn't suggest that uh, especially don't paint them with metallic paint but uh not at the moment any other question i believe the slides will be sent out after the meeting so i will indeed send everything out there Nima, I love it when you said you you go you just go to this magical place and then you know arrange everything i love that well thought through, guys. All right, keep it open for some questions. I know it was pretty short and sweet, but it was packed with some info. Um, let's leave it open for a couple of minutes. Any uh, last words, Matthias, you know, uh, Nima? Not from me. I appreciate everybody. Yeah, when it comes to Oversea, just think of Oversea as, again, this magical place where everything can happen. And like today we have Wi-Fi management that allows you to uh, manage your wireless system but we do have a plan to uh, expand that to router switches, access point, and do all of those, uh, or even take care of some of those for you automatically. So uh, it's all using overseas also future-proofing your operation in a way. Yeah, agreed. You know, we had a good question in there about, um, it's hard to paraphrase it, but about, it was about stacking the POE, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, being able to determine if one was to go down and so forth. That was a good question. You guys might want to check that answer back out when you uh, review this. All right, guys. Yeah, we just got uh, Carrie. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for attending.